What's up, Cal Gang? Welcome back to Static. So let's solve this problem. So we have this femur uh, attached to a pelvis, and it says that there's three forces attached to it, basically. Uh, those are the three vectors there. And we want to find the resultant force of these three vectors and its direction theta counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. So let's go ahead and solve it. So we're doing vector addition. Uh, basically, we want to add up these three forces to get force resultant. But we can't just add them up because they're vectors and they're all pointing in different directions. So let's break them down into their Cartesian vector format. So let's start with this one. So this is force one, force two, force three. Let's start with force one and go through each one of these, converting them to their Cartesian vectors. So force one is simple enough, right? It goes straight up. So that means it's gonna have a zero I component, but a positive 60 J component, because it's pointing all in the Y direction. So it's all pointing in the J components. The 120 Newtons is pointing at this 5, 12, 13 triangle. So we're gonna say force two is equal to, now when we want to convert uh, force to a Cartesian vector, but it's at a triangle, we can do the ratios from the triangle that it acts at. So if we wanna find the X component, let's start with the magnitude. So we have 120. Then we're gonna multiply it by its ratio in the X direction. So its X component of this triangle is five and its hypotenuse is 13. So the ratio we're looking at is five over 13 in the I direction. Now the reason we're doing that because the 530 triangle is just a similar triangle, and if we just multiply it by the magnitude, we're going to get the same exact thing for the x component here. We make it positive because it's in the quadrant one. So then the j component, similarly, is going to be 120, but instead we're looking at the y component, which has the 12 attached to it. So this ratio is 12 over 13. Now we're going to pull to buy it by j, newtons. All right, so let's do the math on this, force two, Plug this into your calculator, you get 46.2i plus 111j. So that's the one we're looking at there. Let's do it for force three. So force three is equal to, so now we have an angle, we're not given a ratio. So the rate angle is 30 degrees. So let's go ahead and do the same thing. So of course we're gonna start with our magnitude, 80 newtons. But now we need to multiply it by a ratio. Now, cosine or sine is a ratio. Um, so if we want to find the x component, all right, we're looking at the bottom here. We can make this kind of its own triangle like this. Now we're looking for the adjacent side. And when we're looking for the adjacent side, cosine is what's adjacent. So we're gonna attach our cosine to this because we're looking for the adjacent side to the 30 degree angle. So if they're cosine of 30. And remember cosine of 30, let's just do a little cosine of 30 is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So it'd be adjacent over hypotenuse. Similarly, that's what the ratio we did here was with the adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's why it's basically the same thing when we attach a cosine of 30 as this by 13 Similar thing. So now let's do it for the next part. So we're doing the y component. So we're looking for the opposite. And when we do opposite, remember that's Sokotoa, so sine opposite hypotenuse. So where we want the opposite, we want the sine of 30. And there we go. So this is, uh, let's do the math on this. Is equal to, so this is 69.3 i plus 40 j newtons. So now when we look to force resultant, we're just going to have them all up. So let's do that. So force resultant. Now we're going to start by adding all the i components together. So it's going to be 0 plus 46.2 plus 69.3 i. So this is just all the i components. And then we're going to add up all the J components. So it's going to be plus 60 plus 111 plus 40 J. It's a little ragged up over there. So I do the math on this, and you get that the force resultant is equal to 115I plus 211J newtons. Right, so we're looking for the results in force. We wrote it as a vector, but we want to write it as a magnitude. So the magnitude of a force is just equal to the square root of the I component squared, so 115 squared plus the J component, 211 squared. All right, so this is just the Pythagoras theorem, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So we're gonna get that force results in is equal to 240 newtons. And there's one of our answers. So we can visualize this as a triangle if we want to. Let me go ahead and draw it over here. All right, we have a base, an X component of 115. So it's gonna look like 115, 
on one five, and then a height of 211. So it might look like this, 211, and its hypotenuse is here, and this is 240. So what it tells us is we're looking for the direction theta counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. So if we go counterclockwise from the positive x-axis, we're just looking for that angle there. So there's three ways we could do it. We can use sine, cosine, or tangent. Let's use tangent because that's the most common one that I like to use. So if we say tangent of theta, this is theta, so we're solving for. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So we're gonna add 211 over 115. Now we can take inverse tangent, so theta is equal to inverse tangent of 211 over 115. And then just plugging that into your calculator, you get 61.3 degrees. And those are our answers for this problem one. So thanks for watching. I appreciate uh, the support in watching this video all the way through. Uh, check out my playlist for statics where I have a bunch of problems from the book that I've solved on this channel. And I appreciate it. So I'll see you in the next video. Peace.